why I you stand out out of 67 girls because of your character, not because of your beauty. So that I think is why we won the three of us because of our character. <laughs> so in my country, we are known for our very down to earth mentality or as we say it, acting normal is crazy enough. <laughs> so for example, when uh, our host last year in Netherlands uh, was hosting our Dutch National uh, Song Festival, she was wearing a blue sparkly dress. And the next day, uh, all the media wrote about her dress. Did you see what she was wearing? Nothing about the song festival itself, but uh, they rather have you uh, hosting a show in jeans and a normal t-shirt than in a sparkly dress. So that can be quite frustrating sometimes because um, they always find something uh, physically to criticize instead of looking more at the content or what things are about. And it's the same way with beauty pageants. I always have to fight the cliche that <coughs> beauty, uh, they call it meat auctions in Netherlands. But I hope with being myself, I can prove them wrong. Uh, I studied law, I have a double master in law, and I graduated with a GPA of 4.0. And my ambition is to become one of the very few female professors at Dutch universities, because I believe there are lots of beautiful women, but too little on top positions. So um, uh, I, I, I just, uh, I think it's good actually that the media is so uh, critical sometimes, because it's our job to prove them wrong. And I'm more than happy to do that. <laughs> and uh, on the other hand, they can be very supportive as well. So uh, we should also be thankful for that. And um, they also um, teach us more about the world by being yes. so critical, revealing secrets from our governments. So it's a tough job and somebody <laughs> needs to do it. <laughs> we have to do it. <laughs> and then about my definition of beauty, I believe that everything is beautiful. It's just that we can't always see it or we don't always appreciate it. And beauty really has to come from the inside. So if you don't like what you see in the mirror, you have to change it from the inside. You have to believe in yourself. You have to trust in yourself. And that's what makes a person beautiful. Because if you feel beautiful from the inside, it will show true to the outside. And then again, also during the beauty contest, there are so many beauty queens from all over the world and everybody is so different. You cannot just speak about uh, looks, you know, beauty from the outside because a beauty queen from Africa, she looks so different than a beauty queen from Asia or from Europe. We are all beautiful, but in a very different way. So it's a beauty pageant, is, is, it's two weeks. It's not just the final night that you see on television. We do so many activities, so many projects. They really uh, are testing what's inside of, uh, of us. Yeah. And um, yeah, a lot of people just only think about the final night on television, yeah. but they don't know that it's so much more. It's really about the inner beauty. Yeah. So that's my vision of beauty. Thank you. Uh, I will throw Joelle's second question back at you in a much tougher form. Beauty is, complete the sentence, one sentence. Try to con make very concise what is your definition of beauty, e starting from the end. Beauty is what? Beauty cannot, cannot be defined, full stop. You cannot define it. Everyone's interpretation of beauty is different. Um, my interpretation will be different to yours. Yours will be different to someone else's, so I'm not going to try and define it. Well, for me, being beautiful is a gift. It must start from the inside for everyone to see how beautiful you are. So it's not something that you have to change. It's something within you already. And for me, my beauty secret every day is I look at me in the mirror and I say, hey, beautiful. And I start believing it. And then everyone starts believing me too. Because I always believe that it's 50% you and 50% them. <laughs> right? And then for me, I, I said it before, everything and everyone is beautiful. It's just that we can't always see it or appreciate it. Do you mind if I add quickly to Joel's question? Sure. When I say media, um, I don't necessarily mean journalists. Um, with media in today's society, anyone can be a journalist. And an uneducated voice can pick out what they want. And I think that you need to explore the fact that media is social media. And with Facebook, etc., as an example, you can comment and have your opinion as many times as you want from as many different perspectives, and you can be anonymous. 
And I think that a lot of young women are using social media as an outlet. So when I say the media can be destructive, I'm not necessarily reflecting the people in this room, but everyone, because they are all an outlet for communication. Yes. Okay, Patrick. Patrick Solnoy, Zürcher Zeitung from Switzerland. It is a custom at uh, beauty pageants that the queen of the year before hands over her crown mm -hmm. to the current queen. This wasn't the case two days ago. Uh, what were you to told that uh, why Miss uh, Yoshimatsu could not attend? And if anybody of the management is in the room, uh, Miss uh, Yoshimatsu claims that she was basically told not to come to play sick because uh, there was pressure from sponsors, because she's <coughs> fighting against um, a manager of a major company who's stalking her. What's, what do you re reply to these allegations, please? Um, thank you for that question. Um, I was actually a little bit sad that she wasn't the one that crowned me, but you know what, Alejandra, the 2008 Miss International was actually my idol. Out of everyone, even Miss Philippines 2005 who won Miss International, it was Alejandra that was my favorite. And I really reviewed the whole show that she did that, that year. And it was, it was just heartbreaking for me that last year wasn't the one, but it's this year. But um, we were told that she, she wasn't feeling well and that there were a lot of, um, there were, Someone a stalker? Yes, that and she's not. It's not safe for her to go to that place. I mean, to the coronation night, and so Miss Alejandra was uh, invited, but she was uh, very nice to us. Alejandra, she's amazing, and we just love her. And we were both crying in the back when she crowned me because. <laughs> Yeah, I think we really haven't been educated on what actually is going on, to give you a direct answer. Um, I don't think that when you are going through your moment and your experience that they want to bring a negative sort of yes. outside world into what's going on. So we haven't necessarily been educated on what is going on, so I can't tell you what is and isn't going, going on. on. Um, but I can tell you that the experience um, without her, you know, it was very sad that she couldn't be there. Um, but as for why, um, just read what's in the papers and make your own opinion, I guess. Although we heard, although we heard about her press press, I mean press conference also, and you no, know, we're behind her. So um, I hope that you know everything works out well for her, and uh, she's always in our prayers. <laughs> Natalie, any thoughts? Uh, I don't really um, want to give an opinion about the situation because I don't know the details. Mm -hmm. I can only uh, talk about uh, the experience I do have. And my experience this year was with Alejandra, Miss International 2008. And it was a great experience to have her around. She was always uh, amongst the girls. She joined our activities, very friendly. She was like a mother of us, and we could ask her anything. If we were going on a group picture, she was arranging everything. She said, OK, girls, let's all stand with our right foot in front. So um, yeah, that was a really good experience. And uh, we felt all very happy that she was there to uh, share this experience with us. Uh, I should add before we move on that uh, actually the uh, <laughs> event which he was talking about ha occurred here at this club oh. a few days ago. And uh, if you go to our YouTube page, uh, you can get the, the scoop on <laughs> what actually uh, was reported here and what was uh, said. Uh, all right, uh, next question. All right, well, I have one which I've been uh, holding back. Um, what about uh, misconceptions? I mean, uh, in beauty pageants, as beauty queens, you know, obviously uh, you're, you're in the focus of attention. What concerns you that people are going to get the wrong impression from the new role that you play? What is it that you're going to have to completely fight against every time you have an interview or, or uh, deal with uh, the public? Uh, attention that comes with your new role? Well, you know, um, I think one of the negative stuff that we've been getting is that beauty queens are diva <laughs> or that um, we're just all material and that we're all just the face. 
I mean, I'm actually very happy that you gave this opportunity for us so that you can, you know us better because we're, we're more than just a stage presence where we can talk and we can walk the talk also. So I hope that you s wait and be patient of for the next year that we're gonna be working on our responsibility because we are actually thinking of doing more for even just the three of us. We want to do more and more because we really want to help out and we want to fulfill the, the duties that um, ICA have given to us because this is more than just a crown. This is our responsibility. So I want to do that, especially for my people. I want to help out more for my people at this moment, which they need the most. Um, where do I start? Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of mis. Um, I mis have a feeling that Casey, you have a, a lot to say on this <laughs> issue. So I always go have ahead, a lot fire to say. away. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I'm probably one of the least stereotypical pageant queens ever. I hate even saying the word pageant queen because I'm so far from it. I'm just a little Kiwi girl from, from New Zealand and people go, where's New Zealand? Um, but I think I have, I mean, the, the biggest one for me is world peace. Um, that is always what everyone reduces pageantry down to. And it's frustrating, but I think that if, if the journey isn't hard, it's not worth fighting. Um, I definitely think that being given the opportunity to speak is the hugest part for me because I have so much to say. I have such a strong opinion and, and opinions that people might not agree with. But um, for me, it's the image because I don't necessarily fit the right sort of pageant expectations. I came with one 20 kilo suitcase, three jumpers, pairs of jeans, two cocktail dresses. <laughs> you know, I don't have a bag full of shoes. I don't have a bag full of dresses. You know, I'm not that stereotypical girl and never will be. Um, so for me, the biggest thing to fight is what is a beauty queen and make my own opinion of what a beauty queen is and try to enforce that on other young ladies as well. Yeah, and um, for me, it's uh, the misconception I spoke about in my country that beauty pageants are all about outer looks instead of inner beauty. And I see beauty pageants as a great way uh, for women, uh, for women empowerment, actually. They give us a world platform, a world stage. They give us a voice in the world. Mm. They give us a great title. They give us the opportunity to do many great things. I mean, we visited a, um, a kindergarten when we were here in Japan. And being able with, uh, to put a smile on people's face with just being present, that is something to be very grateful of, uh, bringing joy in the life of other people. So it's a very honorful and grateful job. And then also the beauty pageant itself, um, you have the chance to make a great journey into a new country, to learn so much about the country itself, about the culture. Mm -hmm. And every single girl went there all by herself. We all came on our own into a new country, a new place um, we never met before. And now we have the opportunity to meet so many girls, all from different countries, from all around the world. And that is something so special. And even though you just met, you feel like you know each other much longer because you share a once in a lifetime experience with each other. And uh, ICA also really wants to promote a goodwill, friendship and love between nations. And that's how we experienced the pageants uh, over the last two weeks. Because we made so many friends from all, all around the world. Even though we are the winners, they were still happy for us because eventually somebody needs to win, somebody needs to do the job. But the pageant is about so much more than that. For me, the greatest thing I won are so many new friends from all around the world and so many countries I can visit after this pageant yes. and stay with friends and experience their countries on their way mm -hmm. uh, with them as my private tour guide. So that's yeah. something to be very grateful uh, of. Yes, Thank I you. guess it's cheaper for us to travel now. <laughs> 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 yes, we can have a Euro trip and pay nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I open it back up to the floor. Any questions? <coughs> well, go ahead, Caldun. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Khaldun Azhar, again, for your insights. I'm, I'm really impressed by your uh, presentation. I usually cover uh, political and energy news, so I uh, pushed to come here to just sit. But, see. Uh, <laughs> but now see I really how we are. <laughs> I have a good story. Okay. But uh, please forgive me for my question. I agree totally with you about that the beauty comes from inside. 
So why don't we keep the outside as it is, as we born with it? Mm -hmm. There is a French philosopher said, we always uh, discover that we married another person in the morning. <laughs> when men wake up, they discover <laughs> like different person. <laughs> then the wedding night, you know, you have great uh, cosmetics. So since that uh, uh, beauty is from inside, do you think we will see one day uh, that, uh, that uh, pageant uh, competition held without cosmetics? Thank you. Um, actually, my mom is an assistant um, uh, uh, surgery clinic in a, sur in a surgery clinic, and um, even though she works there, she always tells me not to go through it because it's psychologically also damaging for you. Not just the body. The body sometimes, because it doesn't react so well with the plastic that you put into your body, it reacts and that's where you get cancer, or sometimes worse than that. And also psychologically, you cannot accept yourself sometimes that you battle within inside. So for me, if you can go to the gym and do it, and you know, few lines of makeup can actually give you a nice nose, or a few lines in the eyes can give you a bigger eyes. We have, we have enough fake lashes to put in our eyes to pop off the eyes, so we don't need to be cut and be hurt and to bleed for, for us to feel like we're the next beauty queen. Because if you can do it with, you know, makeup and a little bit of this and that, you can do it. Because for me, the character is what makes you win. It's the presence. It doesn't matter how beautiful or how big or how glamorous, how expensive your gown is. If you cannot do it well on stage, the, the girl who isn't pretty but who has the, the best presence is gonna win over you. So for me, it doesn't matter if you have to go through a surgery, it's, it's how you are as a person that makes you win. So I would love to be in a pageant with no <laughs> cosmetics. To me, it would make life so much easier. <laughs> you know, I, when I came to this pageant, you know, I, I don't have abs, you know, I wore my one piece. Um, I wore what I was comfortable with. And my boyfriend definitely is waking up next to another person because I don't look like this every day. <laughs> and um, I think it's really important to recognize that. Um, the question is not would we ever be in it or would there ever be one, it's would society allow us to have one? Because I think it is not us who enforce that, but expectations of others. So I think that it would be great to have something like that, but it, the interesting question would be how would society react to it? Yeah. And uh, there are already beauty, uh, some national contests in the world that uh, don't allow you to undergo any changes of yourself. So I think that's a, a nice first step into maybe reaching your goal. But then again, I don't see makeup really as something negative. I don't. Some people can say, oh, she put so much makeup or it's like a mask. But um, like I said, um, I, I see makeup as an enhancement of beauty. You can enhance certain features in your face or uh, you can enhance your eyes or your lips or whatever you like of yourself. So uh, I don't see that. I don't think that there's anything really wrong with wearing makeup uh, as long as you don't wear it as a mask, uh, as long as it doesn't make you another person. You still stay who you are. You still uh, are yourself. So, for example, me, I was very prepared every night. I did my hair every morning. I put on nice makeup. But um, I just wanted to show my commitment and my motivation being in this beauty pageant because at home I never wear makeup. I don't do my hair really, but uh, for me it was just a way of showing my commi commitment and my passion. So I don't really see it that negative. Thank you. And we came here representing our country, so we want to give the best we can. Because we didn't come here with our names, we came here with the sashes of our country. So we're representing individuals in, in our country. And as long as we don't show how bad we are from the inside and, you know, <laughs> as long as we're not hurting anyone, I don't think there's something wrong with, of course, makeup. And, and, and actually putting on makeup, I also yes. it also made me feel like an artist. Because <laughs> you are very creative. I, uh, I tried on so many new colors and so many new things. So I really feel like I almost became a painter or a professional yes. artist. Uh, and I had fun with it. And trust me, these girls are beautiful without makeup. <laughs> She's my roommate and my neighbor. 
So, you know, even before winning, we were very close. So we've seen each other in our PJs. So First time I ever met you was with no makeup on it one yeah, in the morning. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, we're beautiful with or without our makeup. So I think that's... But the character is what makes made us win, I think. Well, you can tell right now, right? <laughs> we're just full of personality. And thank God it showed in, in the stage... And that's the reason why we have crowns now. And the funny thing is that um, since we were with so many girls, uh, they all divide us into different groups with our own chaperone. And we happen to came from the same, same group, group, group D. Yes. So we have spent a lot of time together during the pageant. So us all three winning together, it's, it was it's so amazing. Yes, it's so it's special crazy. and it never happened before. Yeah. When we were called for top 15, we were in the back doing a triangle, holding hands. It's like, oh, my God, Everybody. imagine if this is the, the final three. And then went to top five, and we were just like, oh, my God. Like, really? Imagine if we're un again in top three, and then it happened, and we were just like, oh, my God, really it happened? Because it was, it was I, I, well, we were all speechless. I mean, Casey and Natalie. <laughs> Natalie, I know she was going to win. She, uh, when she was called for, for uh, first runner-up, I was like, oh, my God, this is me. Is this me? Is this me? And I looked at Columbia and them. They were just like, congratulating me already. So I'm just like, oh, my God, this is me. Well, it's really funny. <laughs> uh, I do have to say that um, when me and Miss Philippines, we both had a very special feeling about this pageant. It's something you feel and you cannot describe in words, but uh, we are very dedicated, giving our best. And we did have the feeling amongst each other, like, <laughs> yes. mm, is it going is to be you? you or me? And it's funny, if you look back at the video, you can see that we were actually taking each other's <laughs> hands when they were announcing the top three. Yeah. And we <laughs> felt inside, even though we didn't say see it, it yeah. say it or uh, spoke it out, but we felt amongst each other, the one that they are going to call now as first runner-up, the other one of us will be the winner. So you see when they called me as first runner-up, you see me whispering in your ear, congratulations. Because <laughs> for some reason, uh, we, we knew, we felt. Yeah. That's also why I asked my mom to come over. She came to Tokyo all by herself because before I even came here, I had just this good feeling from inside. I was really well pe prepared. And um, I just told her I, I, I would appreciate it if you would be there with me somewhere in, in, in the audience. Even though I couldn't see her <laughs> from the stage, I still felt her presence. And uh, it was a very special moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my mom, too, came to, um, from Canada. And um, she, I gave her some flags, and she gave it out to some of the Filipinos, which is fun. I haven't seen my mom for nine months because I live on my own in the Philippines, and she lives in Canada. So um, the night that she came was um, the pre, I mean, the night of the rehearsals, and the next day is our coronation. It was, I think, I cried a lot, and um, I think that also just gave me uh, the confidence and just the relaxation coming from your own mom. I think that's all. She's actually, she, I think she's my lucky charm. Because my national also, she was there. She flew from Canada. And then my international, she flew again from Canada. So I think she's my lucky charm. So I'm thankful that my mom came. Because um, it, it wouldn't be the same. <laughs> OK. <laughs> um, Edwin, you have a question? Yeah. yeah. This might be the last question, depending on how long the answers are. Sorry. Edwin Carmiol. <laughs> Sorry, I just like to talk. <laughs> Edwin Carmiol, freelance. Do the organizers subject the candidates to some do's and don't do's, and what are they? Thank you. Um, don'ts is to not leave the premises without permission. Of course, because we come from a different country, we you don't want to lose one of the 67 girls because it's your responsibility. What it, what happens if we just go to Shibuya by ourselves and we get lost? Who's gonna help us? And um, the do's is probably keep smiling to everyone mm -hmm. and just be nice. And yeah, I guess that was just the don'ts was just tell us where you're going and don't leave the area where we're going to. I think that's about it, right? Um, yes. I think one of the things that do's was definitely be a good representative, mm -hmm. be a role model. So I think that's definitely being enforced that that is not an expectation, but it's a responsibility that I think comes with the beauty pageant and having a voice. So making sure you have the right sort of voice. Um, they've definitely not told us what that voice should be. They've left that to our interpretation and they've obviously chosen out of the contestants who they thought had the best voice and representation. 
but there's definitely not been a you should be this, you should be that, mm -hmm. otherwise I wouldn't be here. Yeah, and uh, of course the do is also be nice to each other, make friends, uh, because we are all wonderful and uh, this is a great opportunity. So enjoy your time, stay who you are and enjoy every single moment because otherwise you will be at home later and then you will have regrets. So uh, experience the pageants without regrets, enjoy it, be yourself. That's all you can really do, really do. enjoy, have fun, make friends. And then finally, at uh, the last evening at the finals, we'll see what happens. We will hear who is the winner. I don't be really believe that you can influence that in a certain way. All you can do really is be yourself and have fun. All right, well, I believe at the end, how about one last question? You each come from different countries. You have people at home, people in your countries and your home. What's your message? Let's say if you have a national news reporter here from your country, what would you want to tell them specifically to your country's people? You're here? <laughs> from New Zealand? Really? <laughs> There's someone wanting to report it? Um, the message I would say would be um, to support young women, um, support them in their endeavours, whatever they might be. Um, don't judge a book by its cover. Allow us to have a voice. And um, definitely appreciate different opinions in society. I think that everyone has something else to bring to the table and one thing alone is not enough. Bringing everyone's opinions together really makes it beautiful. And I think my country does that beautifully. Um, I just think we need more of that when it comes to beauty pageants. Well, for me, we actually have um, my national uh, network is actually here. So, Mabuhayang Philippines, um, thank you so much. And um, I'm coming home tomorrow, so hopefully I see you in um, the Nai Airport. And uh, my homecoming is going to be my gift for you guys. And uh, so I really want to thank Mrs. Stella Araneta. She's the first Miss International ever to win. And um, she's my national director. She trained me since after um, I won the national pageant in the Philippines. I also want to thank the KF family for training me before I even won national pageant. So um, all the sweats and everything have paid off. Um, Tito Rogel, thank you so much for adapting me and being my, my dad and my mom at the same time when, when I was alone in the Philippines. And um, my family who flew from Philippines. My mom, who flew from Canada, um, and of course God, because this opportunity is just overwhelming, and I think this is just the best gift ever before Christmas, so thanks. And um, thank you guys for being here <laughs> and just um, getting to know us better. We're more than just the stage and um, the crown, so thank you for giving that, us this opportunity to talk. Well, I would like to say that, uh, of course, I, uh, I'm happy that I could bring back this victory to my country. I hope it will uh, raise attention for beauty pageants again in a positive way. And um, I want to thank, of course, my friends and family and all the people that have believed in me and supported me. And I hope that the Dutch people uh, will, will look at this uh, only in a positive way and take an example to people from other countries like the Philippines mm -hmm. because I got so much support from <laughs> her country. <laughs> yes. And uh, they were all sending me very friendly, very positive message, uh, messages. I even had uh, fans in Japan here. They were came uh, to bring me presents in the hotel. It was really... You also got the presents from her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I shared it with uh, the other beauty <laughs> queens. It was uh, such an amazing, overwhelming experience. But I, I think it shows uh, how, we all must <coughs> how we all must feel about this experience, just in a positive way. Uh, encourage the young women uh, going out there representing your country. Be proud of of them because we really want to try our best, put our putting our countries only in a positive way on the world map. Yeah. So I hope that's what I brought back to Netherlands and to the world. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>
and congratulations on your major victory. Thank you. And here I have an honorary membership for Ms. Natalie Dendecker of the Netherlands. Thank you very much for coming. And finally, uh, the second runner-up and uh, very articulate, fut probably future member of this club since she is becoming a journalist, Ms. Casey Radley. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. And I guess we'll get them to stand up for about 30 seconds. <laughs> so from your seats, you may take your last photographs now. And then we'll allow them to leave. And uh, you should stay in place for just a few moments. All right, well, thank you very much. Let's allow them to leave, and then the rest of us can go as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. much. Thank you for giving us the Yes, we speak. And thank you all for coming to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. Uh, we have many exciting press conferences yet to come, so please come often. Bye-bye.